So we're going to stay on the theme of a visual text. Um, the video is visual, it's also auditory, but now we're going to take a look at a visual text. And the cool thing about using simple drawings or cartoons is they feel very approachable, right? You're not intimidated when you look at a cartoon and think, oh, how am I going to make sense of this thing? It's more like, oh, okay, how am I going to make sense of this thing? It's a totally different kind of feel to it. Um, so what we're going to do as a group right now is practice a reciprocal think aloud. So when we start doing this piece, um, we want to activate our schema, right? Um, and usually we're going to start with a more inviting text like this. And so I'm going to model some things that come to my mind. Um, so if you will, we're going to kind of role play a little bit where I'm the teacher, you guys are my students. And so I would put this up either on the board or under a document camera um, so that everyone can see it. And so then I'm gonna start sharing my thinking and I my key kind of piece I wanna say here is that I don't wanna use this as an opportunity to have a, a, a veiled lecture. <laughs> um, instead, I really wanna authentically model what happens in my mind when I look at this text and try to make sense of it. So I'm actually going to be, this is um, a jam board. So I'm going to be on it in another screen so that I can annotate as I, as I work here. Um, so I'm going to use, oops, I don't want the sticky note. I want the text box. Um, so right away, when I take a look at this text, the first thing that my eyes are actually drawn to is this guy's head. Um, Cause I think because it's right in the middle of the picture, and um, so it's kind of central there. And I notice he's sweating. Is that gonna show up? I, I'm noted there, there it is, okay. <laughs> it's just taking a second. Um, and then of course, I, my eyes wanna drop down. And a question I have right away is, why is he sweating? By the way, this all happens in like, you know, the blink of, or not even the blink of an eye, probably even faster in my head. But when I model my thinking, I have to slow down and kind of really talk through where do my eyes go first? What do I think? Then where do I go? Because I'm making my invisible process that's going on in my head visible and starting to articulate that. And sometimes it's really hard to do at first <laughs> because we're so used to doing it so fast. It happens so fast for us, but it doesn't always happen that fast for our kids. And sometimes they think that reading is magic. <coughs> Some people just know how to do it and that's not the case. So we want to really show them here's how we do this. So he's sweating. Why is he sweating? I see that he's moving. Um, actually, one of the th things I noticed, I'm going to use my little pen marker here is these little, um, I think these are supposed to mean movement. I know that when I've seen that in other like cartoons and that sort of thing, that means that something's moving here. So I'm gonna just put moving parts. So, okay, that makes sense. If those parts are moving, that's probably why he's sweating because he's actually pedaling. And now I notice this um, line here that goes, so that's a chord. So, oh, connection to the video we just watched. So I'm thinking he's powering his TV. And guess what? I remembered one of you said, I wonder if I could put this on my TV. <laughs> so instead of pulling a rower, this guy is actually pedaling. But that's cool because now I can see where I've got two examples of the same thing uh, happening here. All right, I'm going to pause my uh, my think aloud and reach out to the class, if you will, and just wonder what were some of the things that you noticed? What are some of the things that you thought of when you first laid eyes on this? And um, I'm welcoming folks to unmute and jump in and share, or if you wanted to put something in the chat too, that's fine. What's something that you noticed? Where did your eyes go? And what did you think?
We've got some responses in the chat. So Don says mm -hmm. he looks like he's in pain, so we really must need to watch TV. And Mike says, is what that water? Oh, sorry, go ahead. Don, what makes you think he looks like he's in pain? How do you know he's in pain? I was looking at that and thinking it's his eyebrows and with the sweat, he looks like he is not having a good time. Um, his mouth, mostly the expression on his face doesn't look like he's very comfortable. Okay. I know my boxes are kind of uh, overlapping a little bit, so I apologize. <laughs> he doesn't look very comfortable. I would agree. Yeah, yeah. Like the whole, the whole, actually, now that you've said that, this whole um, white cloud from his mouth, I saw somebody else um, bring that up too. Um, wondering about that. I'm guessing it's just hot breath, but then again, it's kind of like, does the poor guy, <laughs> does he have breathing issues? I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. Um, but that makes sense. I mean, it kind of goes with our schema, right? Like background knowledge of what we know when you're riding a bike and you're pedaling hard, you're sweating, you're breathing hard. Like, okay, we can make some connections to that. Um, Sherry noticed the mouse. The mouse tells us this will help with the energy bill. Anybody have have uh, else noticed the mouse? <laughs> Cute mouse trying to help us understand, Larry said. Help us understand what? What connection, what did you have to know to be able to, to make that connection with what's there, what the, what the mouse is saying, at least their energy bill will be lower. How did you make the jump to, oh, it's trying to help us understand? This is Larry. For me, it was like he was saying something about energy. So I knew it had something to do with the electricity. Okay. All right. So right away, you have the life schema that an energy bill usually means what you get charged for electricity, right? By the electric company. So just pointing out, guys, I know this all seems simple to us, but this is the kind of schema that we bring to it that if we don't necessarily slow down and think about how do I know that? Where did I learn that? Or, you know, how did I make that connection? That's the kind of stuff that we can articulate, right, for our kids because they might not make that connection. Um, and that's okay because they're they're young. They might not have that schema yet. Um, but this is where we're apprenticing, right? We're kind of helping to say, here's how I made this connection or where I went with this and why I went with it, um, the knowledge I'm bringing. But as you know, sometimes some of the, the connections that we make aren't always helpful when we read text. Sometimes they take us down a bird walk or, you know, this, this path, this tangent that really doesn't really help. <laughs> so, and students are also good at that. So then when that happens, how do you realize you're off track and bring it back? So these are all parts of the metacognitive conversation where we're talking about what's going on in our head and how is it helping or not? Like, what did we do with the text? Where in the text? And did it help? And how do we get back on track? 